Tonight's guest has been running a successful business uh, by drawing furry little critters and has built a name for herself called House Mouse. Won't you please welcome Ellen Jarecki. <laughs> So nice. Uh oh, we've got something I know, here. We do. Everybody's wondering. What's that now? I'm sure everybody's wondering what this is. I'm sure everyone's wondering what it is. Now let, let's just ask these folks. <laughs> we'll get to it. Settle down, you people. Now, uh, how many people out there are familiar with House Mouse? <laughs> make you feel good, huh? It does. Yeah, how did, you, how did you start House Mouse? Back in 1980, student at UVM. You were a student Which then. shows how old I am. You can well, can I say things. something right, right now? Because I remember, um, I remember House Mouse from, from years ago. I remember, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, you know, lady friends who, who would always ha had them and, and stuff. I would have pictured you, and you and I have never met before. Right. I would have thought that you would have been like a really little old lady at this point. I it's, am. You're not, no, but it just seems to me like, like House Mouse has been around for a yeah. very long it time. It has been, 1980. Yeah. So. But you were, you were a college student when you started it. Right. Good yeah. for you. That's yeah. amazing, huh? <laughs> it's called not wanting to study. <laughs> but yeah, it was 1980. And um, the inspiration was that we needed money, like most students. And um, I didn't know, we were trying to figure out how to make money. Barry is my, he was my business partner at the time. And um, I had a little pet mouse. And so I you actually had it. a pet mouse? I actually had a pet mouse that was sort of kept secret in my dorm room. And uh, so, was Eat. this an imaginary friend by any chance? No, it was oh. not. No? Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> the real now, was, it, was, it, was the mouse from the dorm, or was it something you picked Just up? Just a little domesticated mouse. Okay. So um, that was the inspiration behind the whole line of mice. And I began drawing them in black and white. And uh, just little tiny detailed mice that didn't have that much personality at the time. And then they evolved from there. And they certainly so, did evolve from, from, from did. there. So th this is 1980 we're, we're talking uh, about, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. When did you first start seeing it go and, and start climbing right up? Right in the beginning, I, I remember the first little craft show that we did. I was a very, very shy artist. I mean, really shy. If I were in a group of people, I wouldn't say not even one word, OK? So Barry and I went to our, the farmer's market in Shaftesbury, Vermont. And in Shaftesbury? Shaftesbury, Vermont, okay. very tiny farmer's market. And I put my, my, I had 10 designs at the time, put them all out on a little card table. And I hid in the truck. OK, my father happened to drive us there. And I hid in the truck because I didn't want to see what was going to happen. Right. And uh, so I was sitting there waiting and waiting. And Barry was manning the table. And all of a sudden, he comes to the window. And he knocked on the window. and. He said, did you know you sold your first package? And I said, I, we did? And I jumped out of the truck and ran to the table um, because that gave me just enough Why confidence to actually, I was just afraid, you know, very, very shy, insecure about my artwork at the time, and didn't really expect a great reception. So when we sold the first package, that inspired me to get out of the truck and sit at the table. And we actually <laughs> did better than I thought we would. And we by sitting made, at the table. By, yeah, and we actually made $30 that day. $30. $30, which at the time, it doesn't sound like much, but at the time. In 1980, it was more... I'm thinking, quarter <laughs> drafts at Brass And Putin's. students. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That goes a long ways, 30 bucks. <laughs> right. So, uh, and then from there, we did larger craft shows that gained us a lot more revenue. And obviously, that probably inspired you to start creating more, more characters and, and, and moving it from there. Is that correct? Right, exactly. So and, tell, tell us about we, some of the critters that we have here on, on the desk right now. OK. Well, they started out in black and white. Yeah. There was no color at all, just ink drawings. And when we wanted to wholesale to stores, um, the stores were saying, Ellen, you need these cards to be in color yeah, well, because next the inspiration was a domesticated mouse. Yeah. But they became more domesticated as I as time went on. And did, did um, you have names for each of these? Not at the beginning. Okay. About maybe ten years into the business, yeah. we began creating actual characters and naming them, and 
and that kind of thing. But we started out in black and white, eventually went to color, added products. We found that we did, we sold, we made more money by adding more products. Yeah. And um, so we created calendars, gift tags, all kinds of things. And then along with that, a whole string of pet mice. And so aside from the mice, are, are there other animals that we're talking about here that, that you get creative with? There are, you'll see the occasional rabbit. Um, if you look through the line, you'll see a lot of different animals that were added in occasionally. And it was the animal rescue that inspired that, because I do some animal rescue on the side. You're and an animal activist, really, is well, that correct? Well, I don't know if I'd call myself an activist as much as, um, I don't do the protest thing, but I take in, if somebody calls me about a baby bird, I'll take that in. Really? I specialize in those little tiny pink naked babies that you see Wait, lying I on the ground, the little featherless babies, and I will raise them and release them. But I also take- You see take, babies lying on the ground? People do, from, people do find them. Where do you live? <laughs> What is that about, anyway? By the time they come to me, they're hopefully not, but... Um, so people, people know that about you, too. They, 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 right, it's like, oh, right, you know, exactly. here's a naked baby on the ground. Let's they, call Ellen. Let's She'll call nurse Ellen. it back to health. Exactly. They know who the fool is. Uh, now, how, so. how many, at any given time, how many animals would you have in your house? Uh, I've cut down, but I used to have as many I've as... cut down. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an addict. Um, I used to have as many as sometimes 20 animals in the house, maybe included in that a clutch of baby birds, that kind of thing. And now it's, I've, I've taken in um, a rescued dog, so, and that's a lot of time. That's kind of so moving things up it here. Is, it you're, is, You're going up in, in size, size now right. then, huh? Right, it's a miniature poodle, so it's still small, but... Um, is, is there a favorite animal, I mean, other than the mouse? Uh, any kind of bird, small birds, song, small songbirds. Have you ever taken care but, of a woodcock before? Yes. You have? Briefly, and then I transferred it to somebody else. Yeah. We had a woodcock uh, fly into the window at Channel 3 a couple wow. years ago. We should have called you. Did it survive? It did survive. Yeah, Sharon yeah. Meyer, who, yeah. who, loves, yeah. who loves pets, right, she, she, uh, she, she kind of helped take care of it, and she called up mm -hmm. Dr. Metz, who is a, uh, who, who's an animal yeah. uh, he's veterinarian. He's a vet who takes in wildlife. But sometimes. he specializes in birds as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, so they took care of him. He's really kind. He takes in a lot of songbirds that people have found. So, um, and then he passes them on to me. Oh, often. really? Yeah. Really? Or on just one of the other rehabbers who takes in the larger birds. The rehabbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything that you're working on right now that you can share with folks as far um, as what they can see that's coming out? And I know I you, have, have, you brought a friend with you. I who is this? I did bring a friend. Among all my rescues, I get calls from the public as well as pet shops if they've got a, a rescue case. Okay. And often I will get calls about Rodents, of course. Rodents, great. We brought so, a rodent in. Better anybody not be a who's snake a phobic or a rat probably won't be say. afraid. This is a Ugh. yeah, right. We need the mouse trap. This is a two-week-old baby rat who was starving to death oh, in a litter. <laughs> Eyes are still closed. Oh, look at that! It's black with little white feet. It is but. cute. It is cute. So the it, eyes are closed. The eyes state. are still closed, and they'll probably open within the next few days, is my guess. No But it, this this little one has to be hand-fed every two hours around the clock. You must, like, so I mean, you must be cutting up the, the bags meat, like, get really bigger small. Under <laughs> what does it eat right now? Is this it just one just on milk formula, but yeah. not cow's milk, because that usually kills a baby animal. Um, Espelac puppy formula is what That's what I, I was going to say. It really must be well. Espelac. Yeah, <laughs> right. I have, I have no idea. And how long so, will you hold on to this, and will you release it can, to the wild? This one, nope. This is a domesticated rat. Yeah. And will be adopted out. I just actually, for those who are curious, there's a video on YouTube about a hairless rat, which is another variety of domesticated rat named Frizzy. So if you look up uh, Frizzy, the baby rat, on YouTube, you will see her being fed, and she was just adopted out two days ago. This is from you? This was one that I had taken in as a on rescue YouTube case. On YouTube right now. And it's on YouTube, right. And Ellen, before we go to a commercial break, tell us what the website is for you. www.house-mouse.com is uh, the House Mouse website. And you have a second and one. And then there's another one. This is the person who's our licensee, Tim Zider, and his website is See if I get it right. House Mouse Antics is the name of his business. So if you Google that, you'll get the correct get address. I don't okay. want to give you the incorrect address. All right. Ellen Jarecki, everybody. We've got more Late Night Saturday coming up right after that. Thank you.